It's a PS3 fat right here. I only had one PS3 fat. So if it's here, what did I send to the customer? <laughs> Hey guys, how you doing? Sunday night here. I'm beat. I'm beat. We had a long, long weekend. Um, the big accomplishment though is that right there. That is an air conditioner slash heater. And uh, it's installed. It took pretty much all weekend except for Saturday morning when I went to yard sales. But man, this garage got trashed again. It's still not super clean, but mostly because I have a ton of inventory that needs listing and going through. Um, I mean, a lot of it is from yard sales, but then a lot of it is also from my parents coming and bringing me some stuff that my mom got at yard sales. So um, yeah, I got a bunch of a bunch of stuff here that I have to list. Um, yeah, anyways, it's a little overwhelming at this point. And uh, yeah, as far as the, oh, and I finally fixed that green light bulb, which drove me nuts. Uh, as far as the mini split installation went, it was hard. Um, we ran a new electrical wire and a conduit and all you electricians out there, I don't want to hear it. It's fine. And then we've got the, uh, you know, the actual gas and whatever lines, vacuum lines, whatever they're called. I'm going to get a cover for that to make it less ugly. And then it all goes out there and we had to silicone it. I don't know. It was all a big project. Um, I lost a lot of storage space. I lost all that shelving. And I didn't want to put big bins under there, so I put my find this weekend. I got this, this whole setup here. Uh, two speakers, a Technics uh, record player, five disc changer. Uh, this is like the head unit or whatever you call it. It's head unit in a car, maybe it's called an amp or a receiver. Okay, and then uh, two cassette player. And I also with that came this uh, TV slash DVD combo and a DVD VCR thing and these tapes and so all of that together was $65 so I thought that was a pretty good buy the problem is I think it's such a cool setup that I might keep it um the speakers sound really nice and hopefully my angle was okay there speakers sound really nice and it's just kind of cool to be able to test my cassettes my records the only problem is if I actually want to listen to a record I've got to climb up on the ladder which isn't the worst thing since I have my ladder right here and I use it all the time so it's not a big deal to climb up there and put on a record. Um, but yeah, so that's where I'm at. And I just need to sort through all this. Here's a bolo though. Cash flow. My This is my dad's. Um, I don't know where he got it. I don't know if it was a yard sale or what. But it looks like it's worth 40 bucks maybe. 40 to 60 depending on quality. Brand new it might be worth 100. I didn't spend a ton of time comping it. But it seemed pretty solid. So it's Sunday night. 7 p.m. And I just got this place clean enough to actually start shipping uh, and recording. So, yeah, we have a lot of orders, too. We have, let me see the latest count here, 22 items that need to be shipped. Uh, 22 orders. It's also, like, one of the orders has six items in it, so it's more than that. So, yeah, a lot to do, a lot of records, <laughs> a lot of CDs, a lot of cassettes, a lot of music, a lot of music today. Um, my poster's sold. I don't even know if it went to a viewer or not, so we'll see how that goes. I mean, someone bought it. The problem with it being on eBay is I can't know if a, a viewer bought it, but Yah Kasim bought the posters. Thank you, Yah Kasim. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. Um, if you are a viewer. If you're not a viewer, I guess you just like gambling because <laughs> the listing was some posters of varying condition for the fans. And someone bought it for 10 bucks. And then in the description... Only, in th only thing included is some posters that are already packed in the priority mailbox. Some posters are varying condition for the fans. So yeah, I mean, hopefully that was a viewer and he knows what to expect. Um, and if it's not a viewer, uh, okay. <laughs> I thought I thought whoever bought it would write like a little note, like thanks NC Picker or something like that, but no, nothing. So, eh, okay. <laughs> and uh, it's probably a viewer, probably a viewer. If you're a viewer, Yakasim. Put in the comments below, yeah, I'm a viewer, that was me. I'm really curious. Um, but yeah, we should start shipping. Let's do that. I do have two really easy orders to pull. Uh, two O-Snap sold. Hold on, let me grab them. Two of the O-Snap phone grips sold, and those are just right there, so I'll just grab those. These are not to viewers, these are just sold on eBay. $29.99, free shipping, so that's good. 
and uh, let me move that chair out of the way. And let's pull some more. So those are the easy ones. So first, let's go to get a record. Yeah, we're gonna get a record, and it's gonna be in the B section. Let's get to start with a record. The Blackbirds, Barkays, Propositions. So this one's a little scandalous, but it's sold. It's got a little issue with the, the sleeve or whatever, but the actual record's in really good shape. So that one sold, and it sold for. All right, so that sold for seven dollars ninety nine cents, two eighty nine shipping. And let's see, I'm trying to go fairly quick here so we don't have to do like a 40 minute video, but eh, we'll see. Okay, so I sold a piece of an ephemera and hmm, this might be hard to find. It's a book, um, but it's in this bin. And look, see, I haven't even finished sweeping yet. I've got like trash all over the floor. That's like sheetrock and stuff. So still a big mess in here. Still a lot to do, but I wanted to get recording just based on how it was getting late. And I want to edit this for tomorrow. Well, I guess that Atari's good. Actually, that's not a bad place for the Atari to live until I actually test it. I still haven't tested it. Um, but yeah, so this is a piece of ephemera and it should be in a bag labeled books. They're smalls. Books. So it should be in here. And it's red, so I think I see it. And here it is. The Warship Wasa Exhibition. Wasa Varvet 1962. So that is from 1962. And, um, push that back. Let's see what's in it. Displays the walls, bird on the serpent. I don't know. I don't even know what this is, really. But it's some piece of history of Wasa, and it sold for 10 bucks, 289 shipping. So. I'm excited whenever I sell a tiny book like that that took up almost no space for 10 bucks. That's always a good thing. All right, so up next is a great movie. Great, great movie. We've talked about it before. Oh, man, but I don't know where in the world this is stored. Yishka. Listen, I know what you're thinking, guys. You're thinking, what's new? NC Picker can't find inventory. Well, here's the thing. You're right. I'm terrible at finding inventory. Um, I'm not going to look for that now because it's not labeled and I don't know where it is, but I will tell you what it is so you don't have to wait. I will find it later because I know I've seen it recently. It is a laser disc of Angels in the Outfield. So that's pretty cool. Um, found that at a sale a couple months back and I bought like a whole bundle of laser discs for 20 bucks and uh, <laughs> sold this one for $9.99. I sold one like scary one for 10 bucks maybe. And then I bundled the rest and did an auction, and the auction ended up only going for 20 bucks. So I thought I was gonna make a ton of money. I think there was like 20 in that auction, and it only sold for 20 bucks. So it was really disappointing. So my next sale is an interesting one because I got a pretty negative comment the other day, and I'm curious what the mass opinion is on this. Um, I had sold something and shipped it out, and basically the customer paid a lot for shipping more than they really should have had to, so I ended up doing a partial refund on the shipping. Well, a commenter wrote me and said um, that I shouldn't do that, that it sets a bad precedent and people will always expect partial refunds for shipping. You know, the buyer agreed to pay what they agreed to pay on checkout, so there's no reason to refund shipping. Um, so it's an interesting point, right? Because if, if we keep refunding shipping, then everyone expects you to. And some people may be using the shipping as something built into the, the price they're charging for the item. All right, so what I was saying about the shipping thing, right? So people email, or this guy commented and he told me not to discount shipping, but I have this order that I'm really questioning if I should discount the shipping. And I wanna know what you think. Someone bought nitrile gloves for me, a hundred pack. I just dropped the price significantly because they weren't moving to 14 bucks plus $8 priority flat rate shipping. Um, someone came in and bought six, but for each of the six they bought, it charged them $8 in shipping. So they paid a lot of money for shipping. And so they bought the gloves and the shipping, and I think it was $115 or something for all of that. Obviously, it's not going to cost the amount that they paid, the, what was it, 48 bucks or whatever. Um, is that right? 40, 40 bucks? 48 bucks, yeah. 48 bucks in shipping. For gloves and obviously it's not going to cost $48 to ship these gloves so would you give a partial refund to the customer for that really high shipping charge 
or does it actually set a bad precedent, like the commenter was saying, making uh, eBay buyers' expectations too high for shipping refunds? Let me know what you think. All right, so over here we have my dad looking through this questionable buy. I mean, we're gonna, you know, we need to talk about how he gave me a guilt trip for this buy. <laughs> was this in it? Uh, yeah, that was in the buy, yeah. 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 Um, I bought a bunch of knives and uh, I paid too much, I think. <laughs> that's what we're, that's the realization we're coming to. I had the FOMO, the fear of missing out on knives, and I uh, went all in. And it might have been a mistake. Is that the J. Martini one? Yeah. I sold one of those for 15 once. It's a nice fillet knife. knife. Yeah. So maybe that one's decent. I spent a lot. I spent a lot. Not only did I spend a lot, but after I spent a lot, he told me that I, what did you say? Took advantage of him. Because I didn't pay enough. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, so the guy's pricing was ridiculous. He had like 20 bucks on each knife. So when I talked him down to seven bucks a knife, I think to my dad, it seemed like I was ripping him off, but I was just trying to be realistic about the value of the things. So, and I don't even think they're all worth seven bucks. So I think I paid too much, but we'll see. Okay, so next thing that's sold is in M8. And this is like an old school Transformers thing. And it's so. Let's see if we can find it. It's in here somewhere. There it is. Uh oh. It's falling apart. They're made to do that, though. Don't worry. They're made to come apart. Yeah. So there it is. Ugh. I gotta put it back together, though. Hold on. Okay, I got it. It's back together. So, yeah, that's a Transformers uh, blaster. 1984 Generation 1 uh, Takara? Is that what it is? Yeah, Takara cassette deck. And that sold for 40 bucks, $5 shipping. So that was definitely a good one. Um, yeah, in regards to those knives that I bought, <laughs> I wanted to buy all the knives. These are them. I wanted to buy them all because of that whole experience where my son bought a knife and then sold it for too cheap. I was like, you know, I'm gonna buy knives. Next time I see knives, I'm just gonna buy them all. And so I wanted to do that. And look at his prices, $25. Like the prices on here were crazy. That one was cheap, five bucks, 20 bucks. All these knives just had such high pricing. And I was like trying to figure out what I'd offer him. And <laughs> I don't know, my dad's not a yard sailor. He's not like my mom. He's He's very nice, but he, he likes to give people like what things are worth. And yeah, so he basically said I was ripping the guy off and he actually pulled out extra money and gave it to the guy at the sale because he didn't like how little I paid. So gotta love him. <laughs> uh, but in the end, the knives are not worth anywhere near what I paid. And it's probably gonna be the whole buy. See, if he wasn't there, and I know, I know he's like this, which is why I didn't talk the guy down. But if he wasn't there, I probably would have said, eh, I could do 75. <laughs> Because the guy wanted 125 and so I probably would have said, eh, I'll do 75 because I'm not sure of the value. And, you know, I just didn't think they were worth what he had on there. But again, since my, my dad was there, I was like, all right, fine, I'll pay him the 125 And then my dad gives him an extra 20 bucks. So the guy got $145 for what might end up being $100 worth of knives. I need to comp them all out, but it was not a great buy. <laughs> it was not a great buy. I guess I should probably post the video anyways just to... You know show people what not to buy and what not to pay um maybe i'll find a gem i haven't looked through them all maybe there's one in there that's worth 100 bucks and it saves my saves my skin but uh from the ones i looked up it was not promising the best one i found was this one here the remington and it's it comped out at around that price 25 bucks so yeah that's that's the one decent one. Oh, and i found angels in the outfield it was up in uh c5 so that's a laser disc. It sold for 10 bucks. So that was pretty good. Um, let me pull those gloves that we we're talking about. I'm kind of all over the place. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm torn because this is the thing. So I priced those gloves to be competitive at $13.99 plus $8 shipping with the other people who were selling their gloves for like $23.99 free shipping. So there's a lot of people selling gloves for like $22.99, free shipping. And I was like, you know what? I want to do shipping just in case I send an offer. And, you know, I don't want to get burned by a shipping cost. So I did um, the $13.99 plus shipping, $8. 
and that made it like a reasonable comp, right? So it was about the same as them. So this person looked at all the other offers and I was probably the cheapest at the time when she bought. Um, and so this is what she bought, she bought six packs of gloves. But yeah, so I don't know, it's an interesting uh, dilemma, right? Because I probably could ship that, I mean, I don't know, what's it weigh? It's, oh wow, it's actually pretty heavy. <laughs> Uh, I probably, they're probably over a pound each, otherwise I wouldn't have put it in priority. I would have gone first class. So let's say they're a pound each, the package will be seven pounds. Um, shipping that priority, it's, it's still gonna be expensive. Um, I might be able to use cubic rate and get it down, but it might actually be 50 bucks. We'll have to see. Uh, but imagine there, it's possible that it's 20 bucks and she paid 50. Um, would you give her the refund or would you keep the $30 since that's what she agreed to pay upon checkout? Let me know in the comments below. All right, we sold a record, and I think it's gonna be in the Bs. Although, based on the cover art, like what the actual disc says, it might not be in the Bs, because I didn't organize these the same time I listed them. Um, and it says, I'm trying to think how I would have categorized this one. I might have categorized it under a T output, maybe under the O's. L-M-N-O, let's see, O. This looks like it. Put it under the O's. Output, move from me, tough city. And yeah, just output, move from me on both sides, I guess. Oh no, I just thought of a real dilemma. Uh-oh. Yikes. Okay, oh, anyway, so that's sold for $14.99, shipping. My dilemma is I'm out of record mailers. I'm completely out as far as I know. I'm looking around to see if I have any. I have some coming in on Wednesday, but I don't have any right now. So these are gonna be challenging to ship. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do to get them out the door. Oh, I have so many fun. <laughs> I have so many interesting things to talk about today. I really don't want this video to be 40 minutes, but I might not be able to avoid it. There's so many things I need to tell you. So I get a message, um, I'm assuming from a troll, <laughs> someone just trying to, to mess with me. Uh, he has zero feedback, okay? And he wrote and he said, I've noticed in several of your LP vinyl listings, you state shipping by way of USPS media mail. Unfortunately, we aren't supposed to use media mail for LPs. I'm sure you weren't aware of this, so I thought I'd clue you into it. As the seller in Cedar Falls, Iowa will testify, post office won't allow it, and he is losing everything and facing several decades of prison time. Good luck. Prison time for shipping a record media mail. Well, that I don't think is true. <laughs> Again, this is another great time to comment, guys. Have you ever heard of this story of a seller in Iowa who's going to jail for shipping media mail? I looked up the description of media mail after I was sent this because I was just curious. And it says right in the description of media mail on the USPS website, so they have items listed. Okay, so media mail rates are limited to the items listed below. Books at least eight pages, sound recordings and video recordings such as CDs and DVDs. Sound recordings. Sound recordings. <laughs> they even, I think that's even, that could be a CD or a record. Regardless, it says right on it, sound recording. So again, it must be a troll or maybe it's another seller, but no, he had zero feedback. So I don't know, someone's just messing with me. I thought it was funny, so I figured I'd read it to you. Oh, like I said, we did sell those posters of varying condition. So I will grab those. They're already packed, which is nice. That'll be a quick shipment. Um, let's see, what else can we pull here? Uh, okay, so we've got a couple of cassettes. I'm not sure if I want to pull down the cassettes yet. Let's see. Ah, yeah, let's do this one. This will be a fun one to pull. It is in Q10, and oof, it's going to be cramped over here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get up here very easily. Or maybe I will if I put it this way. I mean, we bought so much stuff this weekend, and I've already got so much stuff that my parents brought me. I'll show you something cool my dad brought. Uh, Q10, here we go. Yeah, so we finally sold one of these. We've broken the ice on the Star Wars stuff. This is a salt and pepper shaker, Darth Vader, and a Stormtrooper, and that sold, how much did I get for that? 10 bucks, 1040. I have three more of those, so hopefully the rest sell too. I think they're really cool, so I think someone will buy them. Here's the cool thing my dad brought me I was talking about. A bunch of old books. No, not that. That one I think I got at a yard sale. But like magic books. These are all sci-fi. Robert Heinlein. Heinlein. I don't know if they're worth a ton, but 
They'll be really fun to go through. A lot of these I've listened to the audiobooks, Journey to the Center of the Earth, Jules Verne. And these are old, old Isaac Asimov Nightfall from the, oh man, I'm ripping it. It's so fragile. Uh, from the Book Swap, Guilford, Connecticut. Yeah, I don't know, I just thought this, oh, this looks like a Star Trek one. All new Star Trek adapted, yeah. I don't know, these are gonna be really fun to go through, like I said, this, I'm very interested, I like sci-fi. Uh, Huck Finn. Um, Clifford Simak. Glucose Revolution, that one's probably not worth anything. The Day After Tomorrow. I mean, anyways, just a really cool collection of books. Basically his old collection. Some of it I might even keep, but it'll be interesting to see what those are worth. Sold another uh, part to a bread maker. These are very lucrative. I, uh, I recommend you buy them, unless you live in North Carolina, then let me buy them. Um, yeah, so this is a uh, pan for bread maker for a Hamilton Beach one, and it sold for 30 bucks plus $8.55 shipping. Uh, paid... 10 bucks for the bread maker and I'm gonna sell the paddles for eight bucks a piece and then that for 30 It came with two paddles. So that's a good good buy and uh, Easy easy flip All right, so up next we've got some CDs and it looks like they are in H7 H7 I didn't even know I had any bins that said H on them. That's actually quite perplexing <laughs> Maybe my wife named one H7. Oh, yeah, she did. Okay. This one over here, and it's a couple of CDs, Michael Jackson CDs, and uh, listen, these are, uh, yeah, here we go, Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5, uh, it's three of them, Anthology, and two other ones, let's see, uh, Anthology, Motown Compact Classic, and the Jackson 5. Sold for eight bucks plus shipping on top. And I'm shipping that media mail too. That'll probably add like 10 years to my prison sentence. All right, so we sold another record in the G section. Uh, so let's pull that out. EFG. It is, uh, we sold some of his records before, I think. Uh, Gro Grover Washington Jr. Wine Light. This looks like some romantic jazz. Um, and actually I did listen to that. It is jazz. And it sold for 10 bucks. 10 bucks free shipping. No, not free shipping. I was wrong. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> Medium mail shipping again. Uh oh. Okay. And then we sold another record. A lot of records selling. Um, this one's in the J's. J. James Bond. 007. 13 original themes with the shrink still on it. Now, this one is opened, I think. Is it? No, it's sealed. Brand new sealed. Now well, there's some damage to the shrink, but it definitely has never been played. Um, and this sold for 24 bucks. A little bit more. Oh yeah, and I did take a picture of the shrink kind of damaged. And yeah, I put in the comment, plastic wrap is torn in a few places. So I was very clear about the condition. I don't think I'll have any problems with it. Oh, let's talk about problems with orders though, because last week I was very busy and I made a classic NC picker mistake. And this was a pretty annoying one. Um, I was cleaning. So, okay, let's start, start in the right place, right? Last Tuesday, I think it was, I picked and packed a PlayStation 5 that I sold, a PlayStation 5 Fat, a really big one. Um, it was on top shelf. It was already prepackaged and ready to go out the door. Well, as you can imagine, when I was pulling, when we were doing this installation, I had to pull all this stuff down um, so that we could get up there and do all the lines and all that. And, uh, <laughs> So I'm up there pulling things down and I find this box, this one right here. And in this box, you won't believe what's in here, guys. It's a PS5, or PS3, I'm sorry. Have I been saying PS5? It's a PS3 fat right here. I only had one PS3 fat. So if it's here, what did I send to the customer? <laughs> so I went back and looked at the order page and uh, looked at the tracking number and it was to be delivered that day. It was Saturday, yesterday. Um, and it was going to be delivered. It was on truck for delivery. And so I'm like, well, this guy's about to get a package that is not a PS3 at all. It is some other item. And here's the worst part. I have no idea what was in there. I can't even fathom. Like, maybe it's a printer. You know, I, usually if I prepack something, it's big. Anyways. <laughs> so... I send a message trying to get ahead of this issue because I know it's going to be a return request if I don't do something about it quickly. So I sent a message to the customer and I said, hey, 
I think his name is James. I'm so sorry, but I've made a big error. I sent you something that was not the PS3. I don't even know what it was. And I explained to him exactly what happened. And I said, I'm really sorry, but here's your tracking number. I, you know, I printed a new tracking number and a label. Here's a tracking number for the PS3. I'm gonna ship it out Monday and I'm refunding your shipping that you paid. He paid like $22 shipping. <sighs> this whole thing is gonna be a loss at this point. Not a loss, but at least won't make any money. Um, here's a refund for your shipping. Uh, go ahead and let me know what you receive so I can remove it from my store so I don't accidentally sell it since I no longer have it. Um, and I would love to have you send it back if possible. Now, lucky for me, James is a very nice customer. James wrote back and he said, no worries, not a big deal. Glad you let me know. Uh, send me the label and I'll send it back, which I still haven't done. I forgot about that. So I do need to do that. Uh, hopefully I can have time to do it tonight. He told me, he's like, well, it hasn't arrived yet. I will let you know when it arrives and I'll let you know what's in it. And so sure enough, he sends me a message a few hours later and says, hey, got the package, opened it up. It's a bunch of Christmas houses, like ceramic Christmas houses. <laughs> so I went and looked and this is something Elijah's selling. He wrapped it all up. It's like eight Christmas houses. He pre-packed it, put it up there. And since I didn't know he had done that, I thought it was the PS3 and I shipped out the wrong item. So pretty frustrating. I have to send a label to get them back. I have to send him... I had to spend another 20 bucks to ship the PS3 and I had to refund him his shipping. So it was a mistake. It's definitely not gonna get me bad feedback because the customer's super nice and I was very open and honest about it, but definitely make sure if you're shipping, you ship the right item. All right, so this next item I sold is a bit of a bolo and it looks like I'm almost out of room on my SD card. Uh, it's a S uh, not an SD, a CD. That's funny, I was just listening to this CD. Um, let's see if we can find it. I'm pretty sure it's in this bin. All right, I found it. So yeah, this is the Monkees. This is a CD, it's still sealed. It is from 1994, and that sold for $25 plus $2.89 shipping. So that's pretty good. I mean, I don't know what CDs cost in 19... Well, I kind of do. I feel like CDs cost like $15 to $20 back then. So basically it just hasn't dropped in value. It hasn't gained a lot of value, but most CDs have dropped in value tremendously. That one has not. And again, I'll show you the picture again. The Monkees, self-titled, uh, 1994. Okay, now cassettes. We sold some cassettes. Elijah sold several cassettes, and I sold, I think, one or two. Um, and my first one is here in Q11. Uh, let's see where it is, though. So this one, I think my wife actually listed it for me. I don't think I, I don't remember listing this, so she must have listed it. It's LL Cool J, and uh, not worth a ton, but it's a little money. You can safely down these <laughs> these ladder stairs and uh yeah it's ll cool j walking with a panther sold for 649 289 shipping so yeah not bad um you know i like to show you the side of the cassette because most of the time when you're cassette shopping this is the part you see so that's what you want to look out for if you want a six dollar cassette you know if you're buying them for a quarter definitely worth grabbing uh, maybe even 50 cents but i don't know if i'd pay a dollar for it all right, uh, let's see, is this my son or me that sold this? It's my son, I gotta go get him. Oh yeah, so this is my cassette that sold. Um, it's actually two cassettes that I sold as a bundle. Let's grab those, uh, they'll be in here somewhere. Let's see. I don't really have these organized that well. Tom Petty, um, I really need to like put labels on them. I'm looking for what letter? C. These are P's and I's, so it's not in there. That's empty. Let's see what's in this one. Uh, there we go. C. Chicago. Here it is. Chicago 18 and Chicago 19. It's, uh, I guess that's how they, lay did they really have that many cassettes or is that just what they called those? So this, uh, bundle of two sold for 10 bucks, 289 shipping. And, uh, yeah, so that's pretty good. All right, so this has been a real nightmare. Shipping records without record mailers is the worst. I mean, it's quite a hodgepodge. This is a record, that's a record, that's a record, this thing over here is a record. I mean, records take me like 15 to 30 seconds to ship normally. These have taken 10 minutes each plus. So don't ever run out of record mailers if you're gonna sell a lot of records because every time a record order, record order comes in, it's stressing me out and I just got another one. <laughs> and I don't want to ship it. <laughs> I just got two more. 
Um, one is in the P's. Q R. I guess it'll be back here. L M N O P. There's Phil Collins here. Paul Anka. So this sold. Actually, I think there's two Paul Ankas. Is that another one? Yeah. This is a bundle of two Paul Anka albums that sold. And uh, I have to find a way to pack those. Wish me luck. My new mailers come in, I think, Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, yeah, he sold for $11.99, $3.45 shipping. And Elijah's out here. Hello, Elijah. You have a couple orders. Nothing big dollar. Just a little, little bread and butter stuff. First one is your cars. Remember you did the auction? Yeah. That bag of cars, it did sell for 11 bucks. Hmm. What was your starting price? $9.99? <laughs> Someone bid it up a dollar. That's all right. I, I mean, honestly, it's pretty good. Most of my auctions end with no bids. So uh, that would probably be in one of your bins. I'm not sure which one. But here it is, guys. It's uh, 25 Matchbox cars. You got $11 for it. <sighs> that was, uh, was that from that sale that you bought the uh, S'more Maker? And yeah. that's more maker, right? That was 50 cents for the bag, right? Yeah. yeah, so good profit. 50 cents to 11. He also sold at least one micro machine of that lot already. Pretty Is that the bag? Sure. Yeah, check to make sure that a couple of the cars match. Um, yeah, it's not this one. It's not that one? Yeah, because that has like yeah. a, a fire truck. I don't see a fire truck in this lot. I have two bags, so. Yeah, it's probably on the other one then. What is that? Oh, fire truck. Yeah, that's the yellow line. Okay, so cool. That one shipped. I'd leave it in that bag. For, well, yeah, you got to take it out because it says 50 cents on the bag. Um, so we can pack that up. Do you want to pull your other ones first before you pack it? Yeah, I Might really as well pull them hope all. this isn't like the planes would wrap e every single one individually. No, no, no. Matchbox cars, you just throw them all in a box. They'll be fine. They're made of die cast. Uh, I think. Okay, so in the Eli bin is a cassette. It is the Trash Can Sinatra's Cake. All right, I found it. These are the ones I listed, so it's in there. Oh, we, we had to kind of tear up the place a little bit to find it. Uh, yeah, anyway, so that sold for five bucks, 289 shipping. And then your last, uh, this might be the last one, is the Pixies Bossa Nova cassette tape. And that one sold for 10 bucks, 289 shipping. And let me see if that, I think that's probably it, but let me just double check. Yeah. Yeah, so three sales, 11, 10, and five. So 21, 26. 22, 20, 26, 26 20. 260, yeah, about 20. Um, yeah, it's all medium mail, so 20 bucks. That's not bad, right? That's fine. It's fine. It's very it's fine, fine y'all. It's fine. All right, guys, it's, uh, what day is today? Monday morning. <clears throat> I went to, I was editing my footage when I woke up and I realized my outro was in like super speed mode and my last item I shipped. So I'll just summarize it really quick for you this morning. I sold a golf shirt from uh, Florida. It was from Trump International Doral or something like that. That must be a, a golf course or something in Florida. And that sold for $17.99 plus shipping. And I shipped it for like pennies, not pennies, but first class mail, seven ounces, probably four bucks, three to four bucks to ship it. And uh, hmm, that was it for the sale. So yeah, this is going to be the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe. See you next time.